my mom came face to face with Christopher Wilder, which we now know him as the beauty queen killer. In 1984, serial killer Christopher Wilder began a six week crime spree in which he tortured and murdered his victims. Bosch Hewis is the daughter of one of his victims, and this is the story of how her mum escaped the beauty queen killer. Okay, so my mom was attending college and she was walking out of the library when a very handsome man with a beard approached her. It was raining really hard and he complimented her cute polka dotted umbrella. Anyways, they strike up a conversation and he mentions that because he's a photography student, he notices things like cute umbrellas, he's got an eye for it. But the university my mom is going to, they had a dress code and beards were not allowed for students to have at that time. And so she had a little red flag like, hmm, if he's a student here, how does he have a beard? So the conversation's winding down and he offers to hold her umbrella and walk her to her car because her hands were full of books. She, she says that she really didn't want him to walk her, to, like she just had this weird feeling, um, but felt awkward saying no, so she said yes. As she starts approaching her car, she said that her stomach started getting the butterflies. So they're walking in the parking lot and he's asking, okay, so which car is yours? Which, which direction do we walk? And my mom just can't take that feeling in her stomach anymore. She goes, oh shoot, you know what? I just remembered, I have to meet up with a friend. No need to walk me to my car anymore. I actually have to go back to the building. She then says that he acted a little bit annoyed, but he smiled and asked if he could call her later. That because it's close to finals week, he had one final project where he needed to photograph somebody and thought that she would be perfect and that he would love to connect with her. Now my cutie mama is the biggest people pleaser you will ever meet in your entire life. Maybe that's where I get it from. And she couldn't say no. But instead she decided to come up with like a loop around where I just moved into my new apartment so I don't remember the new phone number, but if you can look at my parents in the phone book, you can call them and then we can connect. Now my grandma and grandpa have very unoriginal names. There's at least 10 people with the same names in the phone book. So she figured, one, he's probably not gonna spend the time looking in the phone book and two, she's not, he's, he's not gonna figure out like which number is theirs. So my mom scurries off and thinks that she's avoided some weirdo, but you know, didn't really think much of it until later that night. I don't think I explained the amount of pressure this guy was putting on my mom when they were in the parking lot for her to help him out was basically begging her to help him with his final. He already had it all set up. It was due tomorrow and it was only gonna take 10 minutes of her time. I feel like anyone with a sliver of kindness in their heart would have said yes, but it all goes back to the fact that he had that beard and at the university she was going to, you can't be a student and have a beard. So that really was just, that's what really gave her that irk. But he wasn't rude, he wasn't aggressive. He was super kind and actually very articulate but extremely pushy. This is the part that gives me chills. He found my grandparents. Now, I don't know if he drove to their house or just called them. We'll have to get her on TikTok so she can actually tell her story. But my grandparents only live 10 minutes away from the campus. So super close either way. So my grandma is the one that actually talked with this gentleman. He's super charming. He mentions how amazing it is that she's raised such a kind woman who's gonna save the day, help him with this project and just how beautiful he thought that she was but he needed her contact information, whether it's her phone or address. A real sweet talker. She gives it to him. So in the meantime, my mom's at her apartment and she does actually tell her roommates about this little interaction, but it's casual. She didn't really think much of it. I should also mention my mom was this really cute cheerleader. She's got this big blonde hair, blue eyes. Um, at the time, the university was number one in the nation for their football program. I think my mom was probably stopped quite a few times by cute little gentlemen. But anyways, so it's later that night and it's only been a few hours since she's met this guy and the phone rings. I first just wanna pause and just like, how creepy is it that he actually followed through? Looked through the phone book, found the grandparents and like actually spent a couple hours hunting her. There are easier ways to go about this, but maybe that was his thing. Maybe he really enjoyed that chase. Okay, so now she's at the apartment. It's later in the evening. She's just hanging out and the phone rings. Each roommate in the apartment had their own phone and the phone in my mom's bedroom started to ring. She walks into her room, picks up the phone and it's him, the guy from the parking lot. She's obviously really surprised because no way did he track her down. Now this part's chilling and I just confirmed this with my mom this morning. He had actually asked my grandma for her apartment address. But the funny part is, is my grandma actually didn't know where my mom lived. She really had just changed apartments and didn't update her mom on the address. Typical 20 year old behavior, am I right moms? 
My grandma would have provided the phone number and the address if she knew it. So my mom's on the phone, totally in awe that this guy went to all this effort. She started to realize that he was actually desperate and she didn't want to let him down. So he's pleading with her. He went to all this effort to set up the shoot. He found her parents. He's now on the phone with her. He kept saying over and over again, you're the only one who can help me. Typical gaslighting. So my mom is still trying to get out of it, saying that she's still busy, but he it's becoming more difficult for her to refuse him. So she breaks down. She thinks, okay, just do it. He'll then leave me alone. It'll only take 30 minutes. I'll walk down to the music hallway, snap a photo, and I'll be right back. Okay, so let's just note that music rooms are typically soundproof. And the way that the building is situated, there's an exit that goes right out to the parking lot. So essentially it would be really easy to do something in that music room that's soundproof, get her into a car. No one would either hear it and probably see it. So she's about to say yes to meeting up with him and her gut, she says it feels like a knife stabbed her in the gut. That's how bad she knew she shouldn't go. And as this is happening, her roommate walked into her bedroom. Her roommate could tell that my mom is having some kind of conflict on the phone and she wanted to sit in and listen in. So she whispers or mouths, what's going on? My mom says she'll never forget what Kareen, her roommate said. Put him on hold. Do you know him? My mom said no. Her roommate then said, you are not going anywhere with somebody you don't know for a photo. Having her friends say that to her released that searing pain in her gut and it gave my mom the confidence to take herself off of Mew and tell him, no, I am not going. See ya. A big thank you to Corrine, Susan, and Stacy for helping my mom. But sadly, the story doesn't end there. So two weeks later, my mom and her roommates are watching TV. And I guess back then, the FBI's top 10 most wanted list would occasionally pop on. And on the screen staring back at her was his face. And she now knew his real name. My mom came face to face with Christopher Wilder which we now know him as the beauty queen killer. He was notorious for his torturings and things that I'm not gonna even mention here on TikTok. You can go Google him, but he's a pretty horrible person. So horrible, that's why he was listed in the FBI's top 10 most wanted list. And there was a nationwide manhunt for him while he had met my mom. So my mom's in shock. And she later did research to see if anyone else had seen him on campus documented in the Daily University, which I guess is the university's newspaper, that there was another student that came face to face with him. He had approached her at four o'clock in the afternoon. Luckily nothing happened, but both she and my mom were totally unaware that there was a manhunt for this man. So we can't share those kind of stories unless there's a lesson at the end. If anyone is ever making you feel uncomfortable, don't worry about hurting their feelings. They've already made you feel uncomfortable. They've already striked. It's okay to be direct and most importantly, listen to your gut.